So what happens when you're not the boss, but you do the boss's work? Have you ever found yourself in a position where you are the one keeping the long hours? Maybe you have the long commute. You're like your boss's go-to person for everything. Oh, and to make it even better, probably you don't get any of the credit and your boss probably gets all of the credit. It can be a frustrating situation. There are so many times where we kind of feel powerless uh, underneath the people who have authority over us. Have you ever been a victim of someone else's choices? It can happen in a lot of different situations. I mean, I think about how often parents make decisions that affect their kids forever. Sometimes as parents, there are struggles with addiction or bad relationships, lifestyle choices, and all the kids and the whole family, everybody has to adjust because of those decisions. I have a friend whose husband had some creative financial investments that he made, and let me tell you, it impacted everybody, even her parents who now support them. Just the list goes on and on. We can find ourselves in a ton of situations where we just kind of feel like we don't have any control. Someone else is making the choice and we have to suffer the consequences. Life can just make us feel powerless sometimes. And a lot of these situations that are happening to us in everyday life are not new. They've been happening since the beginning of time. For example, when I look at the story of Hagar, we really find her in Genesis chapter 16. We meet this young woman who was a servant to Abraham and Sarah. And she was in a situation where the people who had authority over her really did not treat her well. Now, it's interesting, the Bible doesn't give us a lot of information about Hagar, but we do know that she was young, she was a servant, she was Egyptian, and she was the maidservant to Sarah. There's also some old historical writings, a few legends about who Hagar really was. Most people say that she was the daughter of King Pharaoh, like the king of Egypt, that king. And uh, she was the one who actually made the decision to follow Abraham and Sarah. Now this puts an interesting twist on the story. Why in the world would Hagar choose to leave the house of Pharaoh as a princess to follow Abraham and Sarah and be a servant? Well, the legend has it that she witnessed a miracle. She saw the plagues and the disease that God brought on the house of Pharaoh on behalf of Sarah. Now that's documented in Genesis chapter 12. We know that Abraham told Pharaoh that Sarah was actually his sister and not his wife. And so Pharaoh took Sarah as a wife, and that was not cool with God, so everybody had to suffer the consequences. The legend says that Hagar witnessed what God did, and she was blown away. Who is this God that would bring disease on a king's house just because he violated his values? The story says that Hagar came in and told her father, King Pharaoh, I'm leaving. I'm following Abraham and Sarah. And he is quoted as telling her this, you will end up being a servant in the home of Abraham and Sarah. And she responds with, better to be a handmaid in the tent of Abraham than a princess in the palace of Pharaoh. Now, what's the interesting story? And it gives us a little bit of insight potentially into who Hagar was. But whether or not that story is accurate, we will find out very quickly that Hagar can relate to you today. She knows what it's like to be the person that doesn't have the power to have to follow even when she's not in control. So from what we know, we have a princess who chose to be a servant. Now, it might not make sense, but let me tell you, this girl had backbone. I wonder though if Hagar maybe regretted that decision a little bit later. I think that sometimes the emotion of the moment can make us forget the consequence of our decision. You know that moment where you say, I quit, but you don't really think about what it means to be unemployed? Or the moment you're about to hit send or post and reply to that text or that email or share something with the world that might not be a good idea? It's easy to get caught up in those moments. Sometimes you come to a relationship and you call the person and you walk in the door and you say, this is over. But you haven't really thought about what it means to be apart from that person. Those emotional moments can make us make choices that we don't always think through. The consequences can sometimes leave us in places of servanthood when really we could have been princesses. So Hagar finds herself in an interesting situation. Now, 
The other thing that's happening is that Hagar's life is kind of like being downgraded. Have you ever been in a spot where you felt like your life was on a certain trajectory? You were ready for promotion and advancement, and then something happens and all of a sudden you feel like, I've moved backwards. What's happening? How am I in this place? This is worse than where I was six months ago or a year ago. Well, it happens. And it happens to servants of God. You can love Jesus and still feel like your life is heading in the wrong direction. If you read a little bit about the story of Job, you'll find a faithful man who at some point in time felt like God had abandoned him.